things to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, we are very happy to see you all joining this morning once again to study the word of God. We are very happy to have our dear brother Thomas Jacob once again with us to take us through the study of the book of Joshua. Uh, we are uh, we have started a few classes back and uh, our dear brother has covered the introduction and summary and we have seen how the story of change in leadership and story of God leading his people into the promised land, overcoming all the obstacles. We also saw uh, God's, uh, how he is just, and we also saw God's blessings, his judgment and purpose. Uh, and we are very happy to once again uh, to continue to hear in that study. May God help us all uh, to look into this book and take valuable lessons so that it may edify us. We are going to commit this time into the hands of God through the word of uh, prayer uh, and then I'll hand over the session to Brother Thomas Jacob and after the message uh, Brother Vijay Raju will close this meeting in prayer. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful morning that you have given us. Lord, we thank you that your faithfulness is there with us always. Lord, we thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for thy grace and through which we have been saved. Lord, we thank you for our, for, uh, uh, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning once again, through whom uh, we enjoy every blessings in heavenly places. Lord, we thank you for every guidance and the direction that you give to us every day for our our world, for our worldly life as well as for our spiritual life. Lord, uh, as we read in uh, Joshua, Lord, help us to always keep the law of God in our lips. May it not depart from us. Lord, help us to do a careful living according to do everything that is mentioned in it. Lord, you have also promised us when we meditate it day and night, our lives will be prospered. Lord, we thank you for every blessing. We thank you for every corrections. We thank you for every exhortations that is mentioned in your word. Lord, help us to be delightful in thy word always. Lord, as Psalmist, uh, as Psalmist say, says, Lord, uh, help us to be delightful. May we uh, move away from all the things that are told us to move away from. Lord, help us to uh, have a a uh, close inclination to the instructions given in thy word. Lord, help us to walk carefully according to it, uh, not to depart either right or left. Lord, help us to uh, have it meditated upon our hearts day and night. Lord, even this time we commit our dear brother Thomas Jacob into thy mighty hands. Uh, Lord, help him and may he experience your grace this time of our to expound from the word of God. Lord, we uh, be yield to the leading of Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, we also pray for each and every one of the participants who will be joining and who have already joined. I mean, we all experience a smooth internet connectivity from our home. Lord, we commit the ministry of TRC once again into thy hands. We ask all these things. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over to you, Brother Tom. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Greetings to one and all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As our dear brother has mentioned, in the past two classes, we were having an introduction to the life of Joshua and also to the book of Joshua. And Lord willing, today we will uh, start uh, considering uh, this book uh, from the very first chapter itself. So let us sit in the presence of God prayerfully that this uh, class would be a blessing to each and every one of us. As we come to this book, uh, we are quite encouraged to see how God is continuing uh, his presence and his promises with his people and how the Lord 
was leading them through various ways to reach uh, the promised land. Uh, let me uh, share the screen and along with that, let us continue the studies. So here we have um, the, uh, the screen, uh, the first four chapters, as uh, we have considered the last uh, session, it is about entering the land. Uh, that is the first uh, session in the book of Joshua, entering the land. And today we would consider the chapter one, where we have uh, the preparation of Joshua. We can title chapter one as the preparation of Joshua. And when we come to chapter two, we can see how the Lord has prepared Jericho uh, uh, so that the children of Israel uh, would be encouraged to go forward. And when we come to chapter three, we have God's instructions to prepare themselves for the journey. And in chapter four, we have their actual uh, crossing uh, the river Jordan. We will come to uh, those uh, chapters later on today. Let us uh, prayerfully consider uh, chapter one. And uh, let me read the very first verse, uh, Joshua chapter one and verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. So here we have this book starting with a reference to the death of Moses. We know that the past five books were written by Moses. And from Exodus till Deuteronomy, we have uh, Moses actually uh, being present over there. And he was guiding uh, the people of God. And he had a very, uh, very long and a fruitful ministry. And he completed his uh, 40 years of uh, uh, that special uh, time of leadership, uh, redeeming the people of God from the bondage in Egypt and bringing them to uh, the close of Jordan. They are now in the plains of Moab. Now, <clears throat> It was time for Moses to depart from the scene. So he is taken and uh, now Joshua has come and entered the scene. And now he is the leader to lead God's people to the promised land. Now, as we come to Deuteronomy chapter 34, there we can see uh, how Moses died. So this book starts with a reference to the death of Moses. And it is uh, quite interesting to notice that when we come to the last chapter of this book, that is uh, chapter 24, there we have a reference to the death of uh, three people. And especially we have the reference to the graves of three people and the death of two people. Uh, those are Joseph, Joshua, and Eliezer. Now, it is quite interesting to notice uh, that uh, Moses was a leader, a redeemer, a person who brought the children out of bondage. Now, Joseph was also a similar figure. He brought the people out of starvation. He was a savior. We know the, uh, the one of the names uh, he got was Sapneth Pania. And one of the meanings suggested is savior of the world. So as Moses was a rede <coughs> redeemer, a savior for the people of God from Egypt. Joseph was a savior. Now, uh, Moses was a leader. He led them through the wilderness. And Joshua, the other person who mentioned in uh, chapter 24, and that is Joshua, the leader who was the captain after uh, Moses. So we have the third person over here, that is Eliezer, the high priest. And he was the person who stood between the people and God. And Moses was also a light figure because he uh, stood between God and the people. And he brought God's word to them and he pleaded for the people before God. So these three people in, uh, in some word, uh, way, we can say that they, they uh, were a continuity or their uh, they are a reference to the ministry of Moses 
as Joseph, Moses redeemed the people, as Joshua, he led the people, and as Eliezer, he stood between God and his people. Now, these three people are a type of the Lord Jesus Christ also. We know that Jesus Christ he is the savior of the world. And as Joshua was the captain, our Lord himself is known as the captain of salvation in Hebrews chapter 2. And as Eliezer was the high priest, in the book of Hebrews, we are told that he is our high priest. As a savior and as a soldier or as a captain and as a high priest, our Lord also is seen in these three people. Now, Joshua was, uh, Joseph was marked uh, with the forgiveness. He forgave his uh, sinning brothers. And Joshua was a man who is associated as the captain uh, or uh, as, the, as, as the leader. And he was the fighting one, the one who fought uh, for the people of God. So right from Exodus chapter 17. Uh, we have various instances of Joshua fighting, and especially in this book, we have uh, various ways Joshua fought the battle. Our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he fought for us. And also, uh, he, as the Eliezer was a high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ is the faithful high priest for us. So may uh, God help us to uh, uh, get encouraged by looking to these three people who are uh, uh, who uh, brings before us the ministry of Moses as well as the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we come to Joshua chapter 24, uh, we have these three graves. Joseph is buried, Joshua buried, and Eliezer is buried. There are three graves we can see over there. And till now, the mortal remains of these three people are in the grave. But blessed be the Lord, because he has risen from the grave on the third day. And in that way, he is a contrast to these three people. Uh, so we, this book begins with the death of Moses, and it ends with a reference to the three graves. Now, as we consider the death of Moses, uh, we have to consider why Moses died. Uh, one way we can say that it was God's plan that Moses should die before uh, they would enter the promised land because Moses was a picture of the law and Joshua was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is true in one sense. But on the other side, when we look to the reason for the death of Moses uh, in Numbers chapter 20, we know the story and we have considered it earlier. There we read how uh, Moses, uh, instead of speaking to the rock, he smote the rock, and therefore the Lord has, uh, uh, has told them, uh, uh, but the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because he believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. So as a, uh, as a, a judgment from God, uh, Moses died. Uh, Moses could not uh, lead the people into the promised land. So it is the disobedience of Moses that led to death. Maybe it was a slight disobedience in our sight, but Moses was a privileged man. He had a greater responsibility to, to consider and to obey God much more than God's people because leaders are more responsible and they should be very careful and they should be more obedient than the rest of the people. <clears throat> now, in this first verse, we have uh, two words uh, mentioned over there. Moses as a servant of the Lord and Joshua as Moses minister. And it is quite interesting to notice these two words. The first two words, Servant of the Lord. That word servant is Ebed, that means born servant. And in the next place, Moses minister, that word is Sharat, and that means an attendant, a person who is assisting someone, a helper. Now, 
Moses is introduced as the servant of the Lord. In the Old Testament, not many people were privileged to be called like that. Moses was one. Joshua was another person who had this title, servant of the Lord. Then in, when we come to the Psalms, we have in the titles, uh, we have um, David mentioned as uh, the servant of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, we have often uh, that uh, servant of the Lord and my servant, all those words we can see. Uh, it was uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, prophetically, and it has a reference to Israel as a nation. Now, Moses was called the bond servant, a slave of the Lord. That is the relationship between God and Moses. But the relationship between Moses and Joshua was different. Joshua was just an ass assistant or an attendant or a, a minister to Joshua. Joshua was never a bond slave of Moses. We must understand this difference. Sometimes we forget to think that we are the slaves of God. As we come to Romans chapter 6 and verse uh, 22, we are told that once we were the slaves of sin, but now we are the slaves of God, the servants of God. Now, we must remember that we are slaves or bond servants to God. He has the absolute right over us. And when we look to the dear brothers and sisters in, our, in the faith, in our fellowship, we should not consider them as bond slaves. But we have to consider them as the people who are given by the Lord to assist us in the service of God. This uh, twofold understanding, looking to our own selves as the servants of God, slaves of God, and looking to other brothers and sisters as the people given by God to assist us in, us, in our ministry. Uh, this is very important. Often we consider others as slaves and we never consider ourselves as the slaves of God. Uh, and there uh, we get everything uh, changed and confused. When we come to the New Testament, we know Apostle Paul, he calls himself as a servant of God or a bond slave of God. Do those. We know that. And at the same time, we have another word over there that is deacon. Uh, that says ministering. So <clears throat> we should have this uh, difference of these words in our mind. And we are servants of God, slaves of God, but others are not our slaves, but they are uh, the fellow helpers, uh, fellow ministers. They are given for our uh, uh, the, for the help in our ministry. Uh, this uh, attitude should be in our mind. Now, <clears throat> when we come to this, Chapter 1. We can uh, divide this chapter into three. Uh, it is very obvious by a casual reading of this chapter, and there is um, uh, not much effort uh, to divide this chapter. The first nine verses is it is about the commission of the Lord or how Joshua is commissioned by God. 10 to 15. Verses 10 to 15 of chapter 1, it speaks of the commands Joshua gave to the people. And in 16 to 18, we have the commitment of the people. The people, they were self-committed. They committed themselves before Joshua and encouraged Joshua to continue the work which God had given him. So, Lord has started with the death of Moses. As we have uh, seen in the previous class, our God, he has a work and he may bury his workmen, but he will carry on the work he has given us. So if Moses goes, Joshua would come. And uh, that is God's plan and uh, his uh, uh, way of doing things in the service of God. Now, let us come to the first portion, that is the commission of uh, the Lord. When we come to verses 2 and 3, we read like this, Moses, my servant, is dead. 
Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So here we have uh, our Lord commissioning Joshua. And he's saying, my servant Moses is dead. Now it is your responsibility to rise up and go over. Go over this Jordan. Not only you, but all the people. And you have to enter into the land which I do give to them. Very uh, wonderful lessons can be gathered from this command which our Lord has given uh, to Joshua and his people. <laughs> we have uh, uh, this uh, section in a different way in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. God is giving uh, there the direction concerning the travel of his people. And there we read like this in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, and from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost uh, sea shall be your cause. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that he shall tread upon as he hath said unto you. So the words which our Lord has spoken to Joshua over here is already written uh, in the book of Deuteronomy. So he is uh, repeating what he has told uh, in the earlier times. And when we look to this passage uh, from, uh, the, uh, from these verses, we can gather, say, uh, God has given them this land and he has given set a boundary for it. In verse 4 of uh, Joshua chapter 1, we read about the boundaries, which is given also in uh, Deuteronomy 11. And it was quite vast. And um, uh, let me tell you just one thing about this uh, uh, geographical boundary, that the children of Israel did not occupy this uh, full land at one go. They entered and they made a progress. They divided the land or all those that, uh, that is true. But uh, it was uh, mostly occupied in the, the whole land was mostly occupied only during the time of uh, King Solomon. So those, the land was very big and huge. Uh, it was uh, occupied only for a brief period uh, in the history of Israel. But uh, when our Lord would come and he would take uh, the throne and uh, at that time they will again uh, get a full uh, full uh, authority uh, over this land and uh, <clears throat> they will uh, enjoy it. Now, when we come to this promise or the commission of God, we can see that in this appointment God gave a promise and in this promise, there is a responsibility. God not only just appointed Joshua, but he gave him a promise. And uh, in this promise, a responsibility is given. When we uh, read the whole passage, we can see that Joshua was asked time and again to be courageous, be strong and of good courage. That is uh, what God wanted to tell his uh, people time and again. Then he asked him to keep the law. We'll come to it later. And not to uh, turn to the right or to the left. If we turn to the right, it will become legalism. And if we will turn to the left, it will become liberalism. God does not want us to be legalistic or liberal, but he wants us to be faithful to what God has told us. In the passage of time, the children of Israel, they gave much importance to the letter of the word than the spirit of the word. And that made some of them as legalists. 
and many others they left the truth of the scripture and they were uh, they became liberals like so let us not turn to the left or to the right let us go in the right direction now when we look to what god has told them god did not say that the land which i will give to you but god says that i give to you which i do give to them and in verse 3 that i have given unto you so the land is given to them already when we come to the book of exodus chapter 23 there also we have the same truth the land was given to them god has promised it and the land is given to them now only thing is they have to go and get it so there is a responsibility for them and it is to go to to tread upon the land to uh, to uh, to tread upon that land which god wanted to give them now as we read these verses we are reminded of ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 where we are told that all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places our ours in Christ Jesus are given to us he has blessed us with those spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus now it is our duty to enjoy it in a practical way so may god enable us to enjoy what god has already given now the basis of this promise which god has given to joshua is the word of god which he has are uh, told to moses in the book of isaiah we read like this i have spoken and i will bring it to pass i have purposed and i will do it so god has given this land to his people israel since he has spoken it he will bring it to pass so there is there was no need for the children of israel to worry where, whether they will get this land or not they just had to uh, do what the lord has told them because the land is already given to them now when we come to the promises of god in the new testament we are reminded like this in second corinthians chapter 1 and verse uh, 20 uh, we are told about the beauty of the promises of god there we read like this for all the promises of god in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of god by us if god has promised that is not just a word for our comfort but it is a reality the promises of god would be realized uh, so the sooner than later so we have the promises of god are yea and amen when we come to second uh, peter chapter 1 and verse 4 there also we have the beauty of the promises of god mentioned second peter chapter 1 and verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these they might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust these promises are told over here as great exceeding great and precious they are honorable they are valuable they are exceeding great and precious promises and these promises are given so that we might be partakers of the divine nature that we should shed our old nature and we would be transformed to the new nature and uh, uh, we have to Uh, escape the corruption that is in the world through lust so may god encourage us as we consider the promises of god his promises are sure and also that his promises are great exceeding great and precious with a purpose that we should be partakers of his nature now when we look to the promise god has given to joshua uh, there are four important things we have to consider first of all as we see in verse 3 
it is the promise of a portion uh, in three and four also we have uh, every place that the soul of your food shall tread upon that I have given unto you. So promise of the portion. God wanted to give them a land, a portion. Now, when we think of this word portion, uh, I, uh, my uh, thoughts go to, back to the life of Abraham. We know that Abraham and his uh, nephew Lot, they were together. But after coming up from Egypt, they could not live together because they had a lot of wealth, a lot of cattle, a lot of uh, uh, servants. So it was not easy for them to live together in one particular place. So Abraham made a suggestion and he asked Lord to make uh, a, a selection. You can go to the right or to the left and whether you, where you go, uh, I will go to the other side. So Lord, he looked around and he took a portion for himself. And that was the place very close to Jordan. And that was the Sodom and Gomorrah, that part. He went to Sodom. Now he chose a portion for himself. But when we come to Abraham, it is very much interesting for us to know that it was not Abraham who chose a portion for himself. It was God who gave Abraham a portion. Lord, he chose a portion for himself, but Abraham got a portion from the Lord. God asked Abraham to lift up his eyes and to see what God wanted to give to him. May God help us to understand this truth, that the portion of blessings we are enjoying is not what we have chosen. It is God-given portion. God has given it to us. And also in our daily lives, let us trust in the Lord to give us our portion, whether it be, uh, it be a career, whether it be a ministry, Brother, whether it be uh, uh, physical, uh, uh, any health, whatever it be, let us trust the Lord to give our, us our portion. Uh, it should be an important principle. God will give us and it will be a blessing. What Lord has chosen for himself, according to his own understanding and his own priorities, all ended up as a great loss. Everything is burnt in fire. Even he lost his family and whatever remained was cursed by God. What is the, uh, what is the meaning or what is the blessing in such a situation? So let us look to the Lord and let him give us a portion wherever it be, whatever be the area of our life. Let us trust that God will give me a portion and let us wait for it. The promise of the portion. Then we have the promise of the protection. Verse 5 we read, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That does not mean that no one will come against Joshua. But as we know in the history of from this book, that Joshua had to face people. He, he faced the people standing against him, but they were not able to uh, successfully uh, uh, progress against Joshua. So in this promise of protection, we know that there is a conflict. There is a warfare. There would be fightings. But God has given us a promise that you will be the ultimate winner. Success is guaranteed by God. Now, I remember uh, someone made a statement like this. I don't remember exactly who made the statement. The progress is the result of conflict. So Christian life is also a life of various, uh, various uh, conflicts, strives. 
and it's a battle, it's a warfare. It is not devoid of these difficulties, but we have a promise, the promise of protection. Yes, difficulties would be there, but in spite of it, we are given a protection by God. A progress is made and it is a result of the conflict. When we come to the book of Isaiah chapter 42, there we have the servant of the Lord, and that is a clear reference to the Lord Jesus Christ as we read from Matthew chapter 12. And one of the beautiful things written concerning the servant of the Lord is in verse 4, he shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. So here we have the servant of the Lord. Concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, it is written that he shall not fail nor be discouraged. Yes, there can be moments of difficulties and discouragement. Distresses can come into our life. Today morning I was reading from the life of David, 1 Samuel. And there we know <coughs> that uh, uh, the Amalekites came and spoiled everything. And they burned the city of Ziklag. And they carried away the uh, women and the children. They spoiled. And when David came back and saw the situation, he wept. The people who were along with him, they also wept. There we read that David was in a great distress. And the people, they were in grief. They wanted to stone David. But there it is written that David encouraged himself in the Lord. David knew that the enemy has done a great uh, work of destruction, but he encouraged himself. It was a moment of grief, distress, disappointment, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. And he, according to the will of God, he followed that company and he overcame them and he recovered everything. He brought back the people. He brought back the, uh, the wealth. He brought back everything. He recovered all. So there can be warfare. There can be conflicts. But success is guaranteed. That was the beauty of this promise. God gave to Joshua the promise of the portion and the promise of the protection. Then we have the promise of the presence of God. Verses 5, 9, all we read that I will, uh, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Verse 9, uh, Lord says that uh, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. It is the promise of the presence of God. The promise of the presence of God. What a great joy it is for us to know that our God is with us. And we may make sure that uh, we are with the Lord. Uh, we are always moving with the Lord. Here Joshua is given an assurance from the Lord that God is with. He is told that I will never leave you, not forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, the last part, we read the same thing. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Matthew chapter 28 and 20, in that great commission which God, Lord Jesus Christ gave to his 12 disciples, rather 11 disciples, that he told them that, lo, I am with you always till the end of the age. So we have the promise of the presence of the Lord. May God help us to enjoy his presence as we continue to serve the law. So in this promise which God gave Joshua, there is a promise of God's presence with Joshua. And also, there is a promise of the prosperity. That is what we read in verses 7 and 8. God says that you will prosper. Now, when he, God says that you will prosper, it is not the prosperity gospel that is being preached by many these days. 
here that word prosper means prospering in the ways of god prospering in the plans of god prospering in the purpose of god that the purpose of god would concerning joshua and the children of israel would be accomplished that is the meaning of that word prosperity over here we often think of prosperity as material prosperity but god says that uh, you will prosper that means we will prosper in the ways of god in the purpose of god god's purpose would be accomplished and there won't be anyone who is so strong and mighty to object him so these are the beauty of the promise or the ingredients of that promise promise of the portion promise of the protection promise of the presence and promise of the prosperity now these promises could be enjoyed only with certain conditions joshua was asked to go now as we saw in verse 2 there we read rise up and go over god is asking joshua to go now <clears throat> if we are staying in the same place we cannot enjoy these promises someone has told like this even if you have to tread a thousand miles unless and until you make the first move you take the first step you can reach that thousand miles so may god enable us not to sit thinking over but we would actually move we may rise up and go all god has given us the title but it is our responsibility to go and possess when we buy a property that is the situation we have the title deed with us but that is not enough we have to go and possess that property now god has already given them this promise the land now it is their responsibility to go and to take it. now not only that lord asked joshua to go he asked him to gird in verse 6 and 7 we read of that word be of uh, be strong and of a good courage we have that uh, word coming time and again in this first chapter so he had to gird himself he had to be of man of strength he should have the courage to go forth he had to strengthen himself when we come to the book of ephesians uh, and chapter 6 and verse 10 it's a very familiar verse there our lord is saying finally uh, my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord and the power of his might we can be also people of strength and courage provided we find our strength in him we find our strength in him he is asking us to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might it is not our own power it is not any carnal power it is not a power because of the political influence we have but it is a power that is in christ we have to empower ourselves by the power that is in christ now when we understand the power that is available for us again in the book of ephesians we have a beautiful uh, uh, illustration of that power of god that is available for us chapter 1 and verse 19 ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places so here we have a prayer 
so that we would be girded with power and apostle paul as he is describing the power that is available for us he is using all known words in the greek vocabulary to bring before us the truth that it is actually exceedingly great power the four words are quite meaningful and uh, uh, very uh, uh, very good to uh, understand and learn it uh, but i am not going into the detail but the illustration of that power that exceeding great power is given in verse 20 and 21 it is the power that enabled lord jesus christ to rise up from the dead and to be seated in the uh, at the right hand in the heavenly places and to become the head over everything to have dominion over everything it is the power it is the exceedingly great power that is available for us so god asked joshua to go and to gird himself with power and that power is not to, uh, not joshua's own power it is not the power of the military might of the children of israel it is not any other arrangements but it is the power that is available in god and it is so great my dear beloved so let us go girded with power that is seen only in god trusting in god according to his will now not only that he had to gird himself with power he was asked to guard now joshua chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 there he is given a charge that he has to have the word of god in him he had to guard god's word in his life in the life of the children of israel and it is also quite necessary for us we also should have uh, the desire to guard God's word in our lives. We are all weak, and there are times when we err, but we have to be very careful. We should not be available to go wrong. We should guard ourselves to continue in the word of God. Joshua was asked to read the word, to meditate it, and also to obey it. There we have a beautiful picture uh, of the clean animals uh, mentioned in Leviticus chapter 11. Those clean animals were the one who ate the food and then they chewed the cud and then they digested it. God wants it to be so in our life. Not only that we read the word of God, but we meditate upon it and we may chew the cud to bring it into our mind again and again and to enjoy its beauty and to get the nourishment from it. And we have to obey it. That means we have to make it applicable in our lives. Then only the power of the word of God will work in our lives. So we have the promises and we have the responsibilities in this portion. Then uh, from uh, verses 10 onwards, we have Joshua commanding the people. Now, we have uh, two kinds of commands we can see over here. It was commanding the rulers. Uh, they are asked to prepare <coughs> the people to go over Jordan. They, they, they should be ready for the great task that is before them. Command given to the rulers. Now, as we read this, our minds go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 17, where the angel, of, uh, angel came to Zechariah and communicated about the birth of John the Baptist. And uh, there we read like this, concerning John, that he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the law. Now here in verses uh, 10 and 11, uh, Joshua is commanding the people pass through the host and command the people prepare you victuals. So he is giving charge to these officers that they should prepare the people or tell the people that they should be people should be prepared. And that is exactly what God had in mind concerning John when he sent John before the Lord as a pilot. He came. As a foreigner, he came and he, he was asked to make ready a people prepared for the law. And did he do that? Yes, John the Baptist did exactly that wonderful work. Because when John pointed out the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God that carries away the sin of the world. Two of his disciples, they went after the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they were made ready. They were made ready by John the Baptist to receive Lord. Their hearts went after Christ. They went after Christ. And they dwelt with Christ. And they found him as the Messiah. Is a people prepared for the Lord. Now, this is the responsibility God is giving to those who are in the ministry, in the oversight, in the teaching, in the evangelism, that our duty is to prepare a people ready for the Lord, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We, our duty is to encourage the people to be prepared for the task before us before the experience before us. God has given us a task, and that task is to, uh, to show forth the glories of the Lord Jesus Christ in this world. The people should be prepared for that. We are waiting for the coming of the Lord. People should be prepared for that. We are waiting for the rewards. We have to be prepared for so command to the rulers is to prepare the people. And then we, we can see a command to the Reubenites and, uh, uh, and other people, God and uh, the half tribe of Manasseh. What is the command to them? It is to help their brothers to go over Jordan and to get their force. It's actually a command to unite uh, uh, with their brothers. It is not that they are settled down now, they got their portion and they are happy and leaving others uh, to the eye of the people of the land of Canaan. It was not uh, what God had in mind. He wanted his people, the Reubenites, though they got it, they have to go and encourage to unitedly work for the benefit of God's people. And there are times when we may think that my ministry is done. So let others do whatever they want. Or I don't want to be involved in that ministry. Let me stay over here. That is what we usually think. But God is asking Reubenites and others to go over and help others. May God encourage us to go and help uh, those who are in need to Maybe the people of next generation, maybe a young brother, maybe a weak brother, maybe those who are new in the faith, they would be encouraged by our life and our ministry. We should not be satisfied with what we have. We have to encourage others. Then we have the commitment of the people. They say, we will do what you say, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Whatever you tell us, we will hearken. And we are ready to execute those who rebel against your authority. So here we have the people committing themselves into the hands of Joshua and accepting Joshua as their leader. Let me 
tell you one thing. Joshua had a beautiful experience training of 40 years. That is good. Joshua was matured now to take up the role of a leader. That is great. And Joshua has a great acceptance among the people. That is all good. But unless and until God has appointed Joshua for this task, Joshua could not go for this task. And uh, we must remember this too, that we may have the experience, we may have the knowledge, the maturity, we may have the acceptance of the people, but make sure that God has uh, appointed me for this task. Then only we have to move forward. That is what we learn from the making of Joshua as a leader. A divine appointment is a must. When we come to Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, there we are learning various things concerning the oversight of the people of God. In connection with the local assembly, we read there, the elders of the local assembly are called and uh, they are given some important charges and commands by Apostle Paul. And there we read that whom the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers. Holy Spirit has appointed you. Apostle Paul, while they were in Antioch, the Holy Spirit called them for the world. A divine appointment we can see. Also. We must take up the responsibilities of leadership. Only if God has appointed us. Otherwise, let us be satisfied with whatever other roles God has given us. We should not serve by any position, whether it be in the local assembly or in any ministry. Let us wait for the divine appointment. Let God appoint me. We may have more experience or maturity or acceptance, but let us wait for God to uh, appoint us. Uh, so that is very important. Now, not only God appointed uh, Joshua, as we saw in chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Joshua was willing to rise up to the occasion. When there is a need, and God has this plan in his mind, Joshua did not run away from the responsibility. He rose up to that occasion. He was willing to take that great risk, that great task. Not an easy thing to manage lakhs of people. Not an easy thing to conquer lands and to divide it among the people. It was a very Herculean task, so to say. But he rose up to that occasion. He was willing to do that. And it was his duty to lead the people, not according to his own whims and fancies, but in the ways of God. And he had to honor God's word in this task. He had to appreciate and appropriate and apply God's word. And he should be a man of strength and courage. As we read four times in this uh, first chapter. And his duty is to direct the people what not to do and what to do. That is exactly what he did. As we saw in verses 10 to 12. He was commanding the people. Telling them what to do and what not to do. The leader has this responsibility. And in verse 17, the people, as they are accepting Joshua, they are saying just one verse, uh, one word like this. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. So Joshua had a responsibility of making sure that God is with him, or he, rather he is with God. The fellowship should not be broken. 
what all things he is doing god is accepting it and it is his plan his purpose so he had to make sure uh, of that fellowship of the lord so these are the various lessons we can learn about the making of a leader we know that the assemblies they need leaders elders and how can people become elders or leaders in the local assemblies first of all their need of divine appointment there they should rise up to the occasion and they would be willing to lead the people in the ways of god they would be people who would honor god's word and they would be men of, of uh, who are strong and of good courage and they would direct the people and clearly tell them what they have to do or what they should not do and they should make sure that god is in touch with them or god's fellowship is there they should not be out of touch with god so these are the essentials in the making of a lead so in this chapter we have understood how god has brought joshua to the forefront and how joshua has taken up the charge and how people have accepted him and thus the study in this book of joshua begins may god bless it for the uh, benefit of one and all let his name be glorified thank you dear brother for the message uh, we thank god for the wonderful insights that we could hear uh, we heard about the promises the condition and uh, the command the commitment of the people finally the making of the leader let's thank god and uh, uh, i i would announce the further meeting um brother i think this is the old one we can please um so this is is that right one brother February third, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes uh, I'm, I'm sorry about it. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow the session would be uh, from the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, Brother Benaya John would be taking us to the class. Um, we will um, once again. We would like to see you tomorrow morning with a prayerful attitude, so that we may be able to learn from uh, uh, your servant. Now I request Brother Vijay Raju. to close this meeting in prayer thank you brother uh, let us all bow down in prayer our gracious father in heaven we thank thee for this wonderful morning time thank thee lord for once again enabling us to sit at thy feet and hear from thee o lord through Thy servant, our dear brother Thomas Jacob, thank you, Lord, for strengthening thy servants, and thank you, Lord, for uh, enabling him, and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring the great truths from the book of Joshua and from the life of Joshua, and thank you for many wonderful truths thou hast brought before us, O Lord. and especially the promise of the portion and the promise of the protection and the promise of the presence of god and the promise of the prosperity and as we heard that o lord our prosperity in the ways of god in the plan of god and in the purpose of god o lord we thank thee various understanding various truths o lord thou hast brought before us o lord even as we uh, uh, as we call so uh, as we so called leaders to have uh, the leadership qualities o lord finally thou has encouraged us o lord once again to um, uh, to check ourselves o lord with those things and whether we are uh, truly o lord going through all those things o lord meditating and depending upon thee o lord Thank the Lord for all the promises of the Lord uh, of God are yes in Christ Jesus they are being being fulfilled. Thank the Father, Thy presence is promised always with us, O Lord. 
even in the great commission that was promised that oh lord that you will be with us oh lord um uh, with us for us uh, with us for eternity oh lord forever oh lord we praise thee thank you for once again again we remember the promise where two or three are gathered in my name there i'll be in the midst of them yes oh lord all the promises of god are yes in christ jesus we trust uh, every promise of god and today oh lord whatever the uh, time uh, time period we are living in oh lord yes thy presence is there with us oh lord not only the promises oh lord but also strengthen us to go ahead in those plans to be fulfilled oh lord and the word god who encourages us oh lord who give us the courage and who give who give us the strength with the power of god as we see in the book of ephesians oh lord we see that by thy power oh lord we can conquer the world thank you lord for the responsibilities which thou has entrusted to us oh lord as when moses died immediately thou found uh, thy servant Mo- uh, joshua as he was well prepared for this task and today also we need such a uh youngsters such a leaders oh lord already they have been prepared by thee and immediately to take over the responsibilities after the uh after the worker is buried because the work has to be carried out oh lord we praise thee we pray for this younger generation nowadays as we see oh lord and they are all more more or less oh lord inclination towards the career and uh, uh, oriented uh, with the uh, oh lord uh, uh, worldly things but oh lord we pray for the for our youth that they would be oh lord more interested in the things of the lord and be prepared for the next time, next line leadership oh lord so that they may carry out the work of the lord and the plans of the lord and the ways of the lord oh lord we pray this thing thank you lord for once again uh for dear brother thomas jacob thank you lord for uh, uh the has provided us with such a good teaching oh lord continue to bless him oh lord and use him lord mightily for thy glory pray for his family too and the responsibilities that has entrusted to him and uh, that he may carry out oh lord all those responsibilities in pleasing to thee oh lord and thank you for all the dear brethren and sisters those who are joined in this meeting continue to bless them oh lord use them oh lord as we are once again encouraged uh, in various truths of the scriptures portion today oh lord help us to not not only that we be the hearers of the word of god but also we may be the doers of the word of god oh lord thank you lord for once again for this trc platform and bless all the brethren those who are taking the responsibility to bring this oh lord uh, in a, to bring this oh lord in a way that we should uh, come together and uh, sit at thy presence and listen to thy voice and bless all the work which thy servants are doing oh lord we praise thee as we go into our days work be with us and lead us and guide us oh lord help us to be uh, good witnesses unto thee oh lord and be faithful unto thee uh, if if thou tarries oh lord once again we may come and uh, uh, have the fellowship together in this day oh lord otherwise we wait upon thy coming thy kingdom come oh lord as we pray Oh Lord, we thank you. We we bring all glory and the honor to thy name. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again to each and every one of you. May God bless.